All right, welcome back to Chapter 5 on Probability. Uh, we're going to be looking at Section 5.3 on Conditional Probability and Independence. And this will be, once again, uh, covered over two days and two videos. So we are in Day 1. Here we go. What we're going to look at is be able to calculate and interpret conditional probabilities. So we'll define what conditional probabilities are. Uh, we're going to learn the general multiplication rule. Uh, we've learned about the general addition rule, uh, so we'll learn about the general multiplication rule. And then we'll use tree diagrams to help us calculate probability um, uh, that involve two or more events. Right. Uh, we're going to determine if two events are independent. So we'll look at defining you know, how do we know if two events are independent. Um, and then, when appropriate, We'll use the multiplication rule for independent events uh, to compute probabilities. So we'll look at when it's appropriate and when it's not to. Okay, so kind of this is uh, day one up above and day two down below. So what is conditional probability? Well, the probability we assign to an event can change if we know that some other event has occurred. This is the key. This is this idea is the key to many applications of probability. So when we're trying to find the probability that one event will happen under the condition that some other event is already known to have occurred, we are trying to determine a conditional probability. Right. So the probability that one event happens given, that's kind of the key word there, given, so the probability that one event happens given that another event is already known to have happened is called conditional probability. And of course we've got notation for that. So what we're going to say here is suppose that we know event A has happened. Event A has happened. Okay. Then the probability that event B happens given, given that event A has happened is denoted by the following. And the way we read this is the probability of B given that A has already occurred. Okay. I tend to like to use that in the statement. Uh, it's a little bit more casual. Okay. So uh, formulas, and these formulas are on the formula sheet that provided uh, for the AP exam. Um, and uh, we say to find the conditional probability of A given B uh, what we do is we, on the top part, you can notice here, the kind of way to remember this too, so you don't have to look at the formula sheets, but the probability of A given B has occurred is the probability of A and B, or the A intersect B. So you notice here that we've got the two pieces being intersected, uh, divided by the probability of B. So what I like to remember is that this number, that we're, the one number we're dividing by, so that's the probability of just that uh, that event uh, uh, has occurred. Okay. So you can kind of see the pattern down here. Uh, it's really the probability of the intersection of these two pieces, as you see here, divided by the probability of what has been given. Okay. It's just kind of a good way to remember that. So let's look at doing some calculations of conditional probabilities from a two-way table. Okay. So we're going to define two events. We're going to find event E is that the grade comes from an EPS course, an engineering physical science course. And then we're going to find that L is the grade that is lower than B, so in other words, below B. Okay. So it might be helpful to find a little bit of those marginal distributions in terms of our counts here. So, so we have some totals to uh, find probabilities by because, again, probability is the event the probability of a success divided by the probability um, of the total. So we're just going to practice a couple problems here. We're going to take this first one here. We're going to find the probability of L. In other words, the probability that a grade is lower than B. Well, we have no conditions on that. So we're just going to look at the probability that a grade is lower than B. Okay, so what we do is we just simply look at all the grades that are below B. So we add those all up, and that's 3,656. And that's out of the total of 10,000. Okay, probabilities that you're used to finding. Okay, it's now when we get to these problems, 
we have a condition. So we're finding the probability that of E given that L has occurred. In other words, we're finding the probability that the grade comes from an EPS course given that the grade is lower than a B. Yeah, so here's kind of my little tip on this. Uh, you know, so when I'm looking at that line, again, that line means given that. So probably of E given that L has occurred. Okay, so whatever I like to do is I like to look at what's been given. You know, so probably of E given that L has occurred. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be just focusing in on this column. So it says this the, what's given is telling me which way to read. So I'm given a grade level. That's what the, this part is right here, given a grade level. So I'm going to read vertically here. Right? So I'm going to look for the probability of E, the probability of an engineering and physical science course, uh, which is uh, the 800 right here. And given that, it's, uh, that the grade is lower than a B, well, that's out of the 3656. All right, so the 800 out of 3656 is the probability of E given that it was in this column, if you want to think of it that way. And that's the total in that column. Where this one's a little bit different. Okay? I want the probability uh, of the grade is lower than B given the grade comes from an EPS course. So again, I'm given, that's the line here, I'm given this. So given an EPS course, that means now I'm going to read this horizontally. Okay? So given I'm, as I always like to think about, given that I'm in this row, what's the probability the grade is lower than a B? Well, now that's 800, but now it's out of the 1600 because I'm reading horizontally because, uh, again, it's what I'm given. Uh, I read that way, so it should be 800 out of 1600, or 0.5. Okay. We have the general multiplication rule, and uh, you know, what we have is if probability events A and B both occur, can be found using the general multiplication rule. Uh, what we can say is the probability of A, and again this means and, or intersection, you might want to think, probability of A and B, the probability of A intersects B, is the probability of A times the probability of B, given that A has occurred. Okay. So, uh, when we're calculating for this probability of B given A, is the conditional probability that event B occurs, given that A has already occurred. Okay, so to find, in other words, this rule says that for both of two events to occur, first one must occur, and then given that that first event has occurred, the second must occur. Okay, so we've got to do one before the other. So when I'm calculating the probability of A and B, or A intersect B, I've got to find the probability of A, and then multiply it times the probability, multiply it by the probability of B, well, knowing that A has already occurred. So this might change the probability of B, knowing that A has already occurred. So let's look at some tree diagrams that help us with these calculations as well, too. So that general multiplication rule is especially useful when a chance process involves a sequence of outcome. So in other words, we've got something that happens and then something happens. Okay. So that's where we can use a tree diagram. Okay, so, let's start off with a really uh, simple example. We're going to consider flipping a coin twice. So, I don't know, what is the probability of getting two heads? In other words, flipping the coin and going heads on the first one and heads on the second one. So, um, what I'm going to look at here is I'm going to toss a coin. When I start right here, you know, there's, there's Mr. Boone standing here, and I'm going to flip a coin. The probability of it's heads. It's either heads or tails when I first flip. Probably its heads is one half, probably its tails is one half. Well, the first flip is, is tails, I'm going to flip it again. I'm either going to get heads or I'm going to get tails. And the probability of the coin doesn't change, it's still one half of its heads, so one half of its tails. And the same thing up here. If my first coin tosses heads, I'm going to flip the coin again, so the second flip is either going to be heads or it's going to be tails. And again, the probability is, remains the same, so heads half, tails half. So our total sample space, as I said, this is what I'm looking for, is a probability of two heads. But these are the four different outcomes I could get as heads, heads. That'd be going this pathway up here. Heads, tails, which is going heads, tails, this pathway here. Tails, heads, 
is this pathway here, and then tails, tails will be following the bottom route. So uh, when I look at the probability of two heads, probability of two heads is going this pathway here and this pathway here. It's one of the four outcomes that I could get on, the, on this above list up here. But I can also look at just doing the calculations here and going this path, so one half, and then I want to go this path, so I go and, I go this way, and this way. So when I think of the word and, I like to think of the word multiply, and uh, I go one half times one half, which is one fourth, as given right here. So let's look at a little more complicated problem with using tree diagrams. And uh, we've got the Pew Internet and American Life Project finds that 93% of teenagers, and they count 12 year olds as teenagers, uh, and then 18, 19 year olds is not because uh, they probably consider them to be adults. Um, but they find that 93% of teenagers use the internet. And that 55% of online teens, so in other words, to be an online teen, you have to be on the internet, so you already have to be in this group. So uh, they found that 55% of those online teens have posted a profile on social networking sites. So what I want to know is what percent of teens are online and have posted a profile? All right. Well, this is where a little tree diagram might help. So here I'm starting off with a randomly selected teenager. And the first thing we're talking about is whether they're online or not. Okay, or use the internet. And, uh, you know, so I guess same thing, use the internet. So we've got 93%. Okay, so we've got this teenager. I want to ask the question, hey, are they online? Well, it could either be yes for this level right here, uh, or it could be no. And they told us here uh, that they found 93% of teenagers do use the internet. So that's where we come up with the 0 0.93. 93 93% of those randomly selected teenagers follow this path. And thus the complement of that would be the 7% follow this path. Well, then let's go look at here. 55% of online teens. So these are the online teens right here that get to here. 55% of them have, a, have posted a profile on social networking. So we ask the question, do they have a profile? Well, you have to be online here. If you're online, uh, you can either have a profile, and they said 55% do. That's that number there. The complement would be 45% would say no. Now this one's kind of interesting. Can we come down here? you got 7% of the teenagers uh, uh, use the Internet. Well, you got to ask the same question. Well, do they have a profile? Well, if you don't use the Internet, you're not going to go this way. You're not going to have a profile. And that's why that profile is zero. You can't have a profile if you don't use the Internet. And then down here, uh, again, if you don't use the Internet, the question is, do you have a profile? Well, the obvious question, the answer to that question is no. Uh, you would have, it would be guaranteed, you wouldn't have an online uh, profile if you didn't use uh, the Internet. All right, so um, when I look at this probability of online, again, 0.93. Probability of profile given they're online. So if, you got, if you're given your online profile, uh, you know, if, if, you, if you're looking at that number right there, so pro, given the probability of profile given you're online, uh, so this is 0.55. So if I want to be probably the probability of online and have a profile, that means I've got to go both pathways. So I'll go online and have a profile. So that's the 0 0.93 times the 0 0.55 to get our final answer. And state that 51.15% of teens are online and have posted a profile. Well, that's it for day 1 to 5.3. You should be able to do the homework assignment for that. And there we go, 57 through 60. 63, 65, 67, 71, 73, 77, and 79. All right, we'll meet you back on the last lesson in Chapter 5, and we'll talk a little more about conditional probability and independence. See you then.